Star Trek fans out here. Are there any fans of Bleep My Dad Says? Unlike Devin, the greatest thing about the character that Mr. Shatner plays in that series is he, he's this loud, opinionated, obnoxious, low heart of a curmudgeon. And what better person to introduce him on stage than Seattle's own Ken Tram? You know, I, I gotta tell you, I, start, I started my career as something of a Jimmy Olsen. And here I am as a Great Caesars ghost, Perry White! I am an unavowed, unembarrassed comic book geek. My mother made me give away a fortune in Golden Age Comics, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, Strange Tales, Mandrake the Magician. I have always been a comic book geek, and I will stay that way till the day I die. I absolutely love it. Yes! Um, so here I am, I've been given the opportunity to introduce a man who doesn't need any. I mean, I don't know how easier this can get. <laughs> this, is a, this is a guy who has been around for at least a couple of generations, and he's not even that damn old. Well, maybe he is. <laughs> but from the Twilight Zone... Wasn't that an awesome episode? To Star Trek... In all honesty, I did not discover Star Trek until I got out of the Army. I, was, I served over in Vietnam, I came home in 1969, and here was this phenomenon. This, this uh, viewers telling the networks, get this program back on the air, damn it. And here was this Captain Kirk. And I discovered this man in a program that I started watching. I'm going, holy Jesus, Mary and Joseph. It's like this program is addressing social issues, political issues. It is putting it in a context that I had never seen before. And then there was T.J. Hooker. And we've come to the point of price line negotiator. very long time, and I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, William Shatner!
I need another question. I need a subject to dance on. Uh, on that note, then. Yes. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You're from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, and we uh, twice have enjoyed the Milwaukee Ballet. You've enjoyed the Milwaukee Ballet. To actually a CD of yours to focus. And a CD of uh, Gonzo Ballet. And I'm wondering, uh, did you even know that that was going on? I mean, it's a, it's did I know that they were putting on a ballet of some songs I wrote? Yes, I was, I was dimly aware <laughs> that, that a ballet company, I hate this mic. Is this on? Turn this on. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I was dimly aware that uh, an, an album that I wrote called, uh, that I co-wrote, uh, called Has Been uh, was uh, on the market and uh, and then uh, I received a telephone call uh, one afternoon and a lady who turns out to be a great uh, uh, choreographer says I'm calling from the Milwaukee, Milwaukee, Milwaukee I guess maybe that was it uh, the Milwaukee Ballet Company and we would like to uh, do some dancing to some of the songs you wrote. And would I do it? And I was astounded. And, and of course I said yes. And that set into motion a ballet um, that was uh, ultimately danced by the wonderful company up in Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Ballet Company. And what they did was choose four or five of the songs from uh, Has Been. Now, Has Been was a result of the transformed man. The transformed man was years and years ago, long before any of you were born, going back into the mists of time. I, I uh, did an album called The Transformed Man, one of the songs that seems to have remained in the public consciousness are songs like uh, uh, Mr. Tambourine Man and Lucy in the Sky with Diamond, all of which have been mocked and laughed at. But in some places, the more knowledgeable places, it wasn't mocked, and indeed, some musicians liked it. So years later, my friend, uh, who's the song? Who wrote the song with him? What? Ben Foles. Ben Foles. <laughs> That's what happens when you get past 40. I hate the distance between us all. So, so Ben Foles uh, calls me and uh, wants me to do something on his album, and I do something on his album, and we become friends. Now, I'm in my office. There's two guys in front of me, and they're saying, we'd like you to make another record. This is now years and years. This is four or five years ago. Years and years after the Transformed Man, and after the uh, the, the attention paid to uh, songs like Mr. Tambourine Man and Lucy in the Sky of the Diamond. And they say, we want you to make another record. And these are the same guys that had pulled uh, Tambourine Man and, uh, and Lucy in the Sky of the Diamonds out of that record and put it into one of their records, which later Nimoy sang on as well. And it was, a, it was Rhino Records, some mocking record of actors who think they can sing. And they're sitting in my office and saying, we want you to make another record that I know they want to uh, continue the mockery. When the phone rings and it's Ben Folds, and he's like calling uh, to be friendly. And I say to those guys, 
Will you accept Ben Folds as the producer of this record you want me to make? And they go, yes. And I say to Ben, will you produce a record for me? And he says, yes. And the deal was set. And when I was able to talk to Ben a little more thoroughly, I said, what are we going to do? How, what kind of a record can we make? And he said, let's tell the truth. And so I sat down, wrote lyrics that were meaningful to me. He put them to music. And we put this record, uh, uh, has been, together. Got great critical success. And now... Milwaukee Ballet is saying we want to choreograph uh, dance numbers to some of these songs. I flipped out. <laughs> so months later, uh, whoever thought was I aware uh, uh, of the Milwaukee Ballet, my wife and I are in the theater in Milwaukee and they dance to a half a dozen numbers that I had